So we know what hunger is. Hunger is a lack of food, but we often hear about that. What we don't hear about is hidden hunger. That is something a little more subtle, possibly more insidious. There are two billion people suffering from a lack of necessary vitamins and minerals in their diet. Our next finalist is determined to do something about that. Harvest Plus has made it their mission to not only develop biofortified, nutritious crops, but also to deliver them so that every child, woman, and man has access to sustainable staple crops. With us today to share their passion and commitment to ending hidden hunger in Africa, we have two members of the Harvest Plus team. In a moment, we'll hear from Iliap Simpungwe of Harvest Plus Zambia. But first, please welcome the CEO of Harvest Plus, Bev Postma. Exactly one year ago today, I was in Rwanda. I was traveling with our field team to a remote village in Mahunga province, where Harvest Plus has been working for more than seven years. As we walked up the dusty lane, I was introduced to Rosalyn. Rosalyn is a 35-year-old single mother and farmer. She has six children between the ages of two and 15. Her husband died two years ago, and Rosalind runs the farm. Rosalind showed me around her garden, as she calls it, a one-acre patch of precious earth that is the sole source of food and income for her family. In the course of a year, Rosalind must plant and grow enough food on this plot to not just feed her children, but also generate a surplus to earn an income. Rosalind proudly showed me around her mix of crops, beans, sweet potato, and a small patch of corn, which is known as maize in Africa. This is everything the family will grow and consume. It's a typical farm in Rwanda, where women are all the smallholders. Rosalind told me she was first introduced to Harvest Plus and our healthier crops four years ago by the head of the farming association in her village. Other mothers were already talking about these crops, saying they not only grow well, but they can help ward off sickness like diarrhea and blindness. Now, Rosalind said she was skeptical at first, but she carved out a small portion of her one-acre lot and switched some of her sweet potato for vitamin A sweet potato and some of her beans for high iron beans. She didn't want to take the risk with her maize in that first year, as this was her most precious crop. It didn't take long, though, for Rosalind to convert more of her farm to biofortified crops and switch from white maize to orange vitamin A maize. She told me that in the last four years, she has seen many benefits from growing these more nutritious crops. She'd noticed that her younger children had fewer cases of diarrhea and were needing fewer trips to the local clinic. Her older children seemed more alert and able to focus on their homework. Her new crops were also growing very well, and despite some serious problems with drought in the region, her overall yields had increased, and she was able to do well at market, especially with her high iron beans and orange maize. Before we left, Rosalind grasped my hands and told me she'd never expected such a small and simple change to make such a big difference to her family. She thanked me and Harvest Plus, and she said, it's like I'm now growing health in my garden. Now, while Rosalind holds a special place in my heart, her story is not unique, but one of many experiences of the farmers and communities that are working with Harvest Plus in Africa and around the world. 
Thanks to our donors and partners, we've already reached more than 26 million people globally with more nutritious, bio-fortified versions of everyday food crops. Since 2012, we've been working with more than 400 partners to get these crops into the hands of farmers and give them the tools they need to tackle the global crisis of hidden hunger. Hidden hunger occurs because hundreds of families, hundreds of millions of families like Rosalind's, rely upon basic, staple food crops, things like corn and cassava, as their main source of food. Foods like vegetables and proteins are just not affordable. And this price gap is growing, not shrinking. Sadly, children are the primary victims of this less visible form of hidden hunger. Recent research by Harvard Medical School revealed these shocking images of the difference between the brain of a healthy, well-nourished child on the left and the brain of a child whose growth has been stunted due to malnutrition. The World Health Organization identifies vitamin A, iron and zinc as three micronutrients that are most lacking in diets globally. These deficiencies are the underlying cause of so many preventable diseases and premature deaths. Iron deficiency affects more people than any other condition in the world, causing devastating anemia, cognitive impairment, and death during childbirth. Zinc deficiency affects about one-third of the world's population, causing stunting, and it's responsible for 18% of malaria cases and 10% of all diarrheal disease. And I can't bear the fact that up to half a million mothers will watch their children go blind this year just because they don't get enough vitamin A in their diets. These deficiencies come at a crippling cost to national economies due to the lack of productivity and lost potential. That's why the global community has set very clear targets through the UN Sustainable Development Goals to end poverty and all forms of malnutrition by 2030. Our global food system is broken. And we need an urgent solution if we are to meet these goals. The good news is we have many of the tools to meet these goals. We just need the right political will and financial momentum to scale them up. The idea of biofortification was first pioneered 25 years ago by a leading agricultural economist, Dr. Howdy Buis. Now, Howdy met initial resistance for his idea to tackle health through agriculture, but he persevered, and he gathered a group of leading researchers in nutrition and plant science to prove beyond doubt that it is possible to provide a natural and cost-effective way to tackle hidden hunger simply by letting the plants do some of the work. Let food be thy medicine. A quote attributed to Hippocrates best captures the groundbreaking effort by Howarth Howdy Buis to dramatically reduce micronutrient and vitamin deficiency across the globe. The world has long struggled with malnutrition. Even today, micronutrient deficiency affects 2 billion people worldwide, and the impact is especially severe among children. Poor nutrition causes nearly half of the deaths in children under age 5, taking nearly 3 million lives a year. And in that same age group, 190 million have vitamin A deficiency, and 155 million are stunted. It was a commitment to confronting this problem that led Howdy to search for a way to infuse essential vitamins and minerals into the staple crops people eat every day, 
to literally have their food become the medicine that would prevent the devastation of malnutrition. Howdy's research led to a major breakthrough known as biofortification, the process of selectively breeding food crops to increase their micronutrient content. Howdy worked with colleagues at Cornell University to demonstrate the effectiveness of biofortification, showing how breeding for high seed mineral content was a win-win proposition because it resulted in both higher plant yields and improved human nutrition. Now, thanks to biofortification, Tens of millions of people at risk of micronutrient deficiencies have the chance of eating more nutritious foods and living healthier, more productive lives. While biofortification takes time and patience, its impact lasts a lifetime. Once farmers start planting biofortified crops, they like the crops' traits so much that they continue growing them season after season and across even larger areas, while also sharing their knowledge and planning material with their neighbors empowering farmers to create healthier food for themselves, their families, and their communities. So, after $380 million in research funding from in the last decade, from our amazing early donors like the UK, the US, and the Canadian government, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Harvest Plus has developed more than 175 varieties of these common staple food crops. Today, families are already benefiting from vitamin A cassava, vitamin A corn, vitamin A sweet potato, iron beans, iron pearl millet, zinc rice and zinc wheat. As with many good ideas, the beauty of biofortification lies in its simplicity. Our nutritionists start by visiting communities where the need is most acute. They examine what people are growing, cooking, and eating every day. Our goal is to make the switch to nutrition as easy as possible by offering a like-for-like -like swap for what is already on plates and growing on farms. Our researchers then trawl through old seed banks, looking for naturally nutritious versions of these everyday crops. They cross them with modern varieties, using traditional plant breeding techniques as opposed to genetic modification. They aim for the nutrient targets set by our nutritionists while maintaining the high yields. After many years, they finally produce a new biofortified crop that will grow even in harsh conditions caused by climate change while packing a nutritional punch. Once the crops are approved for release by national authorities in our target countries, our field teams then work with governments and local partners, such as seed companies, to introduce the crops to local farmers, using existing extension services and seed markets to stimulate the switch. Biofortified seeds cost the farmer the same as their usual varieties. They are just as easy to grow, and they have the added benefit of being extra nutritious. The switch is easy. There's no trade-off in terms of yield or input costs. These crops provide between 25 to 100 percent of daily requirements for vitamin A, iron and zinc, giving children the opportunity to live learn and grow to their full body and brain potential. The impact of this simple change in the global food system is profound and proven. Research has shown that children who ate vitamin sweet potato in Mozambique experienced reduced prevalence and duration of diarrhea. In Rwanda, young women who consumed iron beans every day saw a total reversal in iron deficiency in just four and a half months, improving both their physical and their cognitive performance. And in Zambia, children were able to see better at night after regularly eating vitamin A maize. 
No one sees the real impact of this switch more than our dedicated field teams who are working every day with farmers and communities on the adoption of these crops. I am honored to introduce you to one of our leaders in the field, Dr. Eliab Sapungwe. Eliab is country manager of Harvest Plus Zambia. He obtained... He obtained his PhD in environmental sciences from Wageningen University and his MSc in economics and planning from Reading University. As you will hear, Eliab is a fierce advocate for the adoption of biofortification. Thank you. Thank you, Bev. Good morning, everyone. First, let me say I'm greatly honored to represent the Harvest Plus family out there in the field. Now, I grew up in a remote village in the northern part of Zambia, by the borders of Tanzania. And it's a farming uh, community, and farming is the lifeblood of that local economy. I was the youngest in a family of three sons, and my young mother, beautiful right there, went on to have two of my young sisters after that picture. And that was my Sunday best. <laughs> my family retired from a copper mine and settled on a small farm growing maize and beans. And I remember we ate white sweet potato for breakfast and white maize for lunch and dinner. And most families in the village, in the community where I lived, ate a pretty similar diet. In Zambia, the rates of malnutrition have remained pretty much the same since the early 90s. 40% of kids under five are stunted. And one in every two kids of preschool age are deficient in vitamin A. But my government is doing a lot of work to reverse the trend. For instance, our sugar companies are required by law to fortify sugar with vitamin A. And mothers have to line up at rural health centers to receive vitamin A capsules for their young children twice every year. Now, for most families, the distance, the nearest rural health center can be punishing, and the sugar beyond the sugar cost beyond their reach. Now, that's why I was so passionate about joining Harvest Plus when I learned that the maize, grown by 98% of rural households, a food that I've eaten all my life, sometimes three times a day, can just as easily deliver vitamin A to these families. Now, you see, in Zambia, maize is typically white, and we use it to prepare stiff porridge we call shima, our staple food. And when I joined Harvest Plus some um, seven years ago, I wondered at the back of my mind whether biofortified maize, orange in appearance, would be accepted by my communities. But that question, that lingering question, was quickly answered one day when I first attended the Farmers' Field Day gathering, I arrived with a big bag of vitamin A orange maize at the gathering of some 2,000 farmers, my contribution to the lunch that day, and as a way of introducing the crop to the community. Now, when I presented it to the group of mothers in the lunch committee, they looked at it at first, skeptical. And then I explained quickly that it looks orange because it's enriched with vitamin A. So they accepted, they agreed to cook it for lunch, for the gathering. And at lunchtime, armed with my camera and excited and eager to see farmers eat this version of orange in Shima, I walked you know, from table to table, ready to take the pictures, but 
I was disappointed to find that on every table I went to, it was the traditional white in shima that was being served. Surprised, I quickly rushed back to the mothers in the lunch committee and asked, what happened? And with smiles, they explained that they kept it to take it back to their children. <laughs> they, they said if, if, if it really contained vitamin A, then their children deserved it more than the gathering of, of adults. You know, at that point, I knew that vitamin A orange maize was going to be accepted by our communities, and the mothers were going to lead the way in its use. Now today, Harvest Plus is working with African seed companies to increase the availability of biofortified maize. This will help us to scale up the work that we're doing with the World Food Program and the Zambian government to roll out vitamin A maize in the school feeding programs. Now, with more investment, we can accelerate these programs and reach more children. You know, it gives me a sense of great pride working for these programs, knowing that the next generation of children from my village, from Zambia, and indeed from the rest of Africa, will not face the same old of malnutrition that I did. Thank you, Eliab. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Eliab's experiences in Zambia reflect change that is happening all around the world right now. Biofortification has been described as the next big movement in food. Consumers everywhere are demanding a healthy, natural, more sustainable solution to their everyday food. We're already seeing some early interest from major food companies who wish to invest in biofortified ingredients for things like breakfast cereals and healthy snacks. Right now, though, we have a supply problem, not a demand problem. Our teams are working at full stretch to meet this demand, while overcoming all the usual barriers of working in developing countries. We don't yet have the capacity to accelerate production, but we do have an overwhelming interest and support from governments, the World Bank, and the food industry. We are truly at a tipping point of taking biofortification to scale, but we need to do so responsibly and sustainably working with African smallholders like Rosalind to secure their place in the global supply chain. Our initial funding allowed us to develop the proof of concept to show that biofortification works. We've completed the first three phases of this journey. 100 and Change will allow us to accelerate our rollout, focusing in Africa, where Harvest Plus has the greatest experience and where the level of need is still most acute. We plan to invest $100 million in a rapid expansion, growing our operations from six to 17 countries to mainstream biofortification and reach at least 100 million people by 2022. This will serve as a blueprint to roll out to the rest of the world, to achieve our vision, our long-term goal, and Howdy's dream of making nutrition the default setting in staple food crops and reaching one billion people by 2030. Our implementation plan focuses on four areas that will both generate supply, the push, and stimulate demand, the pull, to scale up biofortification and position it for long-term growth and sustainability. First, we need to create the right policy environment. Governments like Nigeria, Rwanda and Uganda have already added biofortification to their national agriculture and nutrition strategies. But we need to re reach more countries, more governments. Second, we need to scale up our support to governments as they test, 
adapt and further improve biofortified varieties for local release. You see, this creates real ownership at a country level and ensures the seeds are made available in the first instance as public goods. Third, we need to expand our farm gate work and work with local partners and farmers to invest in more crop demonstration plots, farmer training days and health education, to take biofortification to more farmers in more countries and catalyze widespread adoption. In parallel, we must scale up investment in our go-to-market strategies to stimulate consumer demand for biofortified products, both locally and globally, through nutrition messaging, social marketing, and mass media campaigns. To truly embed biofortification into the global food system, we need to make naturally fortified food the new normal. Once exposed to biofortified foods, we know consumers like them. We just need to scale up awareness, connect farmers to markets, and introduce standards. When I was in Nigeria last month, I spent some time with our amazing regional marketing team. Many of them, like me, have a background in brand marketing in major, with the major food companies. They introduced me to Atenuka Labile, She's the co-founder of Kato Foods. She and her team are working with Harvest Plus to develop new, innovative food products like local children's favorites, Castard, which, as you can see, to my surprise, tasted an awful lot like custard. But it's made from yellow cassava. It offers up to 40% of a child's daily requirement for vitamin A. With the right investment, we know we can successfully deploy these strategies to increase both supply and demand, to reach 100 million people in Africa in the next five years. We've spent the last 15 years designing the crops, testing and refining our delivery and scale models, and growing an international network of partners that are so crucial to local success. Farmers and seed companies have readily adopted all biofortified crops in Africa once they're exposed to them. By the end of last year, we were reaching nearly 4 million farming households. That's 20 million people. In Rwanda, in just a few short years, 22% of bean farmers are now growing high iron beans. Consumers have expressed a preference for the look, taste and health benefits of vitamin A in blind taste trials. And look, even the former first lady grew vitamin A sweet potato in the White House garden a few years ago to tout its health benefits. Eliab and I, are part of this amazing global team of 170 passionate staff. Ten of us are here today, including our founder, Dr. Howdy Buis, who's traveled all the way from the warmth of the Philippines to be here today in Chicago. Between us, we are specialists in crop development, seed systems, marketing, nutrition, advocacy, and brand communications. Together, we have the collective experience and partnerships to take this movement to scale. 20 years ago, biofortification was just an idea. 10 years ago, it was an exciting R&D program with a lot to prove. Today, we have a unique and scalable solution to one of the world's biggest social challenges. We find ourselves at a unique moment in time. Right now, this is the UN Decade of Action on Nutrition. And for the first time, we have the knowledge, the tools, the evidence, and the political leadership to achieve a nutrition revolution. 
with the right investment, we can give biofortification the huge nudge it needs to make Rosalind's story the norm rather than the exception. With $100 million, biofortification can change the lives of 100 million people in Africa in just five years, just by turning their crops into medicine. Imagine what can be achieved if we reverse the effects of nutrient deficiency on this scale in Africa and give every child the opportunity to live, learn, and grow to their full potential. Thank you. Well done. A thanks to Harvest Plus. They've shined a spotlight on a critical problem, and they've proposed a proven solution. Ladies and gentlemen, we're taking our second short break, and then we'll hear from our third finalist. <laughs>